Hi you guys, welcome back to the Royal Wedding So Along. This is week four where we are going to be making the bodice of views C and D. Um, I've got my pattern pieces all laid out on my fabric um, for everything except for the front bodice pieces because they are cut on the single on a single layer of fabric um, because there's one for the left and one for the right so i just wanted to show you how i laid out my pattern pieces here uh, mostly i followed the uh, layout suggestions on the pattern instructions but since i am not making the sleeved version um i obviously did not have a sleeve to cut out. So um, instead of placing the um, sleeve right here at piece 11, I okay, so yeah, that was my fire alarm. Um, everything is fine. They were just doing some testing, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, um, back at it. So um, what I was saying is that since I'm not making the sleeve, um, obviously I don't need to cut out the sleeve pattern piece number 11. So what I did was is I put nine here, six here, seven here. And then in this area is where I moved the bodice so that I didn't have to do this like funky half fold on this section. So I put the bodice here and then I moved eight to go this way and then 10 is right in here. So it's all still in like a nice little rectangle, leaving me plenty of space for um, 14 and 13, but I just have the um, pocket piece on here and the back piece on here. Also, I just wanted to say, typically I cut two of the pockets out of the uh, fashion fabric and then two of the pockets out of the lining fabric. So when we get down here to the lining, I'll add a set of pockets to this somewhere. I just don't think the pockets need to be uh, all four out of the fashion fabric. So I just don't do it that way myself. But anyway, so I have this all cut, or I have this all laid out. Like I explained, here's kind of where you can see the changes I made with adding the pocket, where the skirt is positioned. Again, um, paying attention to that kind of strange, uh, uh, grain line and then I moved the back bodice piece there and then um, everything else is as the layout suggests. All right so I've got my bodice pieces uh, pinned onto my fabric and I just wanted to show you that well don't be alarmed this is the selvage edge when I laid it on a single layer it was easier for me to lay it long ways with the selvage edge on each end. So don't think that I have just like given up on following the grain line, not true. But I did wanna point out it's very little. Um, the instructions do say that when you're cutting on a single layer, um, pin the pattern on the right side of the fabric. On some other patterns, they will indicate right side and wrong side of the um, fabric for the cutting layouts as well but this one does not follow that because the um if the fabric is white then that's supposed to indicate the wrong side so it can be a little bit confusing but i went and found this little tidbit here um, which indicates that your fabric should be facing right up right side up and then your pattern piece should also be facing right up as well. If you did this wrong, you would have the right side would be the left and the left side would be the right. So it's not like an end of the world kind of thing. You could definitely make it work. Your bodice would just cross over backwards. Um, maybe that matters, maybe that doesn't. But to prevent that from happening and to get a perfectly looking um, garment, just like the pattern envelope, um, place your fabric right side up. All right, so our bodice piece with the pleats um, does have a whole bunch of 
pattern markings that we need to trace to the wrong side of the fabric. Um, there are a few ways to do this. The way that I find to be simplest is to get some of this um, carbon paper. Um, it comes in different colors. I think uh, mine came with yellow, blue, and white maybe. And then they also come with these little tracing wheels. So you have one that's serrated, and then you also have one that is smooth. Um, and basically you just lay the carbon paper underneath the pattern, or underneath the fabric, and then line up your, um, marking tool and you just follow the line all the way down. I'm going to try and do this one handed, but it's sliding around a little bit. Um, anyways, and so whenever you get done and you flip your fabric over, you have all of your lines uh, marked onto the wrong side of your fabric nice and neatly. So that's how I'm going to do that for um, these little pleat lines. I've also done the same thing on the skirt. Um, so you'll see similar instructions there for that. And then when we get over to the um, bodice left, um, I'll also do that again for the, um, what's it called? A dart. <laughs> um, I'll do that again for the dart. And then I like to trace over the um, center front lines. You definitely don't have to, but um, I like to use those as a way to just make sure that my bodice is lined up as the pattern designer intended. Okay, so now we are gonna be cutting out our interfacing. I think that the midriffs are pretty self-explanatory. You have the midriff back, um, not cut on the fold. Then you have the midriff front and usually instead of like trying to finagle folding this in half, um, I just use the fabric piece to cut out the interfacing for the um, for a folded piece. So that's the midriff front. And then here's my upper back, bodice back. Um, that you can't really see it, but there is one traced. And then this is mirror image of that. But the important part here is the interfacing pieces for the bodices. Because we have two different pieces, one left, one right for the bodice, um, you have to pay very close attention to how you cut out the interfacing because you don't want to cut this out with the glue facing the wrong way. Um, so you have your right front interfacing piece, which is piece number 16, face up on the glue side of the interfacing. So the glue is face up for all of these. Glue is face up, right front piece is face up, and left front piece is face down. So if you wanna check my work, you just place your interfacing right side, or the glue side up, um, then you lay your fabric onto it. It doesn't have to be like very precise because this is not actually where you're gonna lay your um, uh, interfacing piece. But then you lay it on there and you go, no, that's not the right way. Is this the right way? No. And then you go, oh, okay, there's the shoulder piece up top. It matches perfectly and I need it to be glued to the wrong side of the fabric so I need it to go just like this. Boop and I move it over just like that. Um, same thing with the left piece. You take it, that's the back. Um, you take the left piece and you throw it on here and with the interfacing glue side up and then you take your left interfacing piece and you lay it down with the shoulder seam and you're like, no, that doesn't match the curve. But when you flip it over, it does match the curve. So that's how you know that this piece goes like this. Boop. And you just move it over and take away all of your pieces and then you move them into the right position, double check the grain line, so on and so forth, you know the drill. I'm also gonna cut away the seam allowances of the interfacing so that they will fit within the seam allowances of the garment and not create more bulk there. Um, you, heard, you heard me talk about that if you watched the last bodice video. Same story here. So I'm gonna go cut out all this interfacing and I'll be back. Okay, so after we get our interfacing adhered to all of our bodice pieces and the midriff pieces, the next step is to make the beautiful pleats in our right bodice piece. So if you remember, we um, traced off all of those pattern markings. You might have a hard time seeing them on the camera, but 
they're there. I can see them all. And the easiest way to do this is you're just going to pinch. So there's a set here, there's a set here, and there's a set here. Don't forget the one that's like hiding underneath your interfacing. If you have thicker interfacing than me, you might not be able to see it and you need to retrace it. But so you take the first set and you just pinch them together like so. And you're going to kind of follow this little um, V that is cut out. You want to take some pins and you're going to mark through the end of one and make sure that it lines up with the end of the other one. And if it does, boop, pop your pin in. And I'm going to put maybe, I don't know, three in here. And again, put it through the line on this side and make sure that it lines up with the line on this side. Um, if everything is lined up properly, it should. And then do one final one. You can see the tail wants to slide away here. So do one again at the bottom. Um, again, putting a pin through the line and that is off. Pin through the line here and then let's see, there we go. So like so, and then we'll just go vertical with this one. And so when you go to your mach machine, you're gonna sew from here all the way to the end, back stitching um, to lock that into place. And then you're gonna do it two more times, once for this group of pleats, and then once for this group of pleats. And then we'll have our pleated bodice. All right, isn't that beautiful? Got all the pleats done. You end up pressing the pleats to on the inside. You press the pleats toward the side seam, and then you put in a little basting stitch down here to hold it all in place, but it looks so good. Oh, I love doing pleats and darts because it finally starts to give two-dimensional piece some shape and starts really coming together. Okay, so the next step is for us to actually attach the um, back piece. So you need to find the one that matches up to your bodice, which that one didn't. I'm just trying to match the shoulder and armhole, arm sigh. Um, okay, so here it is. So now you are going to sew the shoulder seam up here as well as the side seam down here. Okay, so now we have one complete right bodice for the outside. Now we are going to move on to the left bodice, which is right here. Um, basically, what we need to do for the left bodice piece is put the little dart into um, this piece. We traced it off whenever we were cutting out our fabric. Um, you can also see the interfacing is um, adhered onto here as well. So this is a very similar technique as to how I did the um, pleats before. You just want to pull these two legs together um, and get them somewhat matched up. And then you put your pin through one of the um, lines and then push it through the other line. So the two lines are gonna match up all the way down. Again, I'll probably do about three. If it were a longer dart, I would do more. But I usually do three. And then when I get to the tip of the dart, I will just put it right there at the end just so I know that's where it's ending. So we're gonna put this together and then similarly to the right side, we are going to take the back bodice piece and attach it um, at the shoulder seam and at the side seam. All right, so at this point we have our entire upper bodice completed. Um, the instructions are gonna tell us to go ahead and do the lining for each of these pieces, but we are going to postpone that um, simply just to try and keep all of the videos of the sew along kind of organized. So if you can bear with me um, and not follow the instructions <laughs> completely, um, I swear we will have a gorgeous looking garment at the end of this all the same no matter what order we do the construction. So the last part of today's video is going to be just about sewing the midriff together. We've already done this in the uh, bodice view A and B video. So you might've seen it already, but if you didn't, you just simply take your um, midriff pieces and you have to remember that the curved line faces up toward the um, bodice 
Once you've got that down, then you want to find your um, back pieces that have the little notches and match the notches to each side seam, like so. Um, and this one's over here, like so. So you'll have your entire midriff piece completed as well. All right, so this is where we are going to stop for today. I think it's looking really adorable. We're not gonna attach the uh, midriff to the bodice yet because um, we're gonna install the, um, attach the lining to these pieces first and then sew the lining into this seam so it's nice and beautiful um, whenever we go to finish off the insides as well. Um, so yeah, so this is where we're gonna stop for today. I'm really excited about it my lemons are making me so happy um let's see so next week we are going to be doing the skirt the skirt is the same no matter which view you're doing um so follow along with that whether you're doing view a and b or view c and d and then in the week following is when whenever we'll get the lining all attached. I have a bunch of tips and tricks for the lining, so you'll want to make sure to watch that before you attach it. So patience is a virtue. We will get there, I promise. Um, in other Royal Wedding Sew Along news, be sure to follow the, um, or join the Facebook group. Um, there's a lot of activity going on there now. A lot of people have decided on their fabrics and which pattern they're going to use. Um, so there's just lots of conversation and questions and it's just kind of a lot of fun to participate in that kind of community um, and then if you are posting on any of your socials to um, or about the royal wedding sew along be sure to tag it with royal wedding sew along so that we can all see um, what you guys are doing and how you're progressing and everything else um, but that's going to do it for week four for me i will see you guys back here next week for week five where we'll make the skirt bye